Now is not the time to get pretty. Hello, Emily White. You're the only one who's logged on so far. We can see you even though we can't hear you. Well, I mean, we can't see you, but we can see that you're on. Right. That's what I meant. <laughs> I mean, also, we can see you. Magic. Um, while we're waiting for other people to log on. Uh, oh, she has a question. What are questions be? Hi. Um, uh, James is moving today. Oh. Cool. Okay. All Let's right. See. It's three o'clock and people are starting to log on. This is awesome. We'll give it another couple minutes to let yep. people to get on and then we'll start. But thank you all for joining us. And for being prompt. Yes. Bonus points for that. Um, we tried to do theme music and we ran into problems, but if you have a great, any great ideas for theme music, please, uh, share those with us. Yes. And then please. we'll see if we can get that technology running. There should be a chat, uh, down somewhere in your, uh, dashboard. So please feel free to make use of the chat, um, for questions as well as, uh, oh, Karen wrote a lovely mm -hmm. question. Uh, a it's more of a statement. <laughs> what might be all the ways, Karen, that you can love us? Oh, Jane's on. Hi, Jane. This is fun. All right. I think we should get started. I agree. All right. So, um, Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to the Creative Education Foundation's webinar series. We will be doing these regularly uh, while we're in this uh, crazy world that we're living in right now. Uh, the series is called Creativity Connections, and we're hoping to connect you with some solutions and ideas and uh, resources that are helpful for you. Today, we're looking at negotiating ambiguity how deliberate creativity transforms uncertainty into action. The purpose of this webinar is to empower us. Uh, these are uncertain and trying times, and we wanna help you use deliberate creativity to reduce stress, to find solutions, and to take action. We're gonna take you through some activities during this webinar, but know that you can repeat them again and again on your own later. Today, we wanna to work on taking pressure off of working memory. Uh, it, working memory can only handle about seven items at a time. And if you're anything like me, there is way more than seven things running through your brain right now, and way more than seven things that you need to be balancing in your life. Uh, we're gonna use the creative problem solving tool called Three Eyes to figure out what we can start working on today. We have a short worksheet for you. If you want to access it now, it should be in your dashboard for, for handouts. Uh, and you can and print it. if it's it not, I'm adding it right now on the, in the event that it decided to stop being there. Uh, so it'll look like this. Do. While Missy is doing that, uh, when you find it, you can print that out. Uh, you might you'll also need something to write with, because we're going to work through this as a group right now today. And then anybody who's watching this later or wants to do this at home, please feel free to again use this over and over again. Okay, so there should be in the handout section of your dashboard a file called What's Circling for You. It's a PDF, so you should be able to open it up and if you have the ability to type right on there, uh, you can do that or you can print it out. Um, and I just saw a note from Beth Miller that it came through. So there you go. Now we know it's there. Awesome. Okay. 
so uh, now that we have our, um, I should also, you know, I should pay attention and advance the slides. Uh, so this is our worksheet, uh, kind of what is circling for you. Um, so whether you have um, a blank piece of paper um, or, or your worksheet, um, just know that the thoughts that keep us up at night are often the same ideas that get us out of bed in the morning. I know for myself, last night I went to bed thinking about a challenge that I was having, and boom, when I woke up this morning, the answer was kind of right there. The lovely thing about our brain is it just keeps working even when we don't pay attention to it. Um, and what our hope is today is to give your brain a little bit of a rest. We're gonna try to make it not remember all of the things. As Beth said, we can only remember about seven things at a time. So instead of trying to let those circle and circle and circle, uh, we're gonna capture them in writing, which A, helps us see exactly how many things there are, but B, also lets our brain take a break from having to think about them. Uh, this works because we can use in and out thinking. Anybody who's been in a meeting uh, and your attention kind of wanders for a minute and then you come back, you have experienced in and out thinking. Um, right now, we're going to be using some in thinking and let the brain really concentrate on one task before we let it wander off somewhere else. Once these thoughts are out, then we can address them. Uh, but when they're circling, all they're doing is kind of making us anxious and, and a little bit crazy. So you can use either the worksheet if you got it printed out. If not, blank sheet of paper, anything will do. Uh, and I want you to do what we call a brain dump. Write down all of the things that are churning through your brain right now. Don't judge, don't pause, just keep writing. We're going to write for a solid minute, which doesn't sound like a long time until it goes silent and then you're shocked at how long it is. So get, get set. I'm gonna set my timer and we're gonna just write for one minute everything that is going through your mind right now. Go. about 20 seconds. All right, finish writing your last one. And if you can, if you need to go back to this later, please feel free to do so. So let's look at some of these, these thoughts that you've captured. We're gonna flip the script and turn them into things that you can work on. So first we need to do is establish the, pri the priorities that can use some creative thinking. I want you to go through your list of items and you're gonna figure out which ones are important. Mark those off with just a check mark. Go through and look at everything. What is really important? Check those things off. It's okay if not all of them are important. We have a lot of things going through our mind. But let's we're going to work today on the things that, that we need to work on. All right, once you've done that, we're going to go through the list again. I want you to look at the things that you have influence over. Give those a star. They might be different than the ones that are important, and that's okay. Um, there are some very important things that are going on in the world right now that you don't have the ownership of, that you don't have control over. So look at the ones that you do, you can control, and give those a star. All right, and once you've done that, I'm going to have you go back to the list for a third time and go through and look at the ones that require some imagination, things that aren't quick and easy solves, but are gonna require a different viewpoint. Give those an arrow. Go through and find the things that 
that require some creativity for them. All right, you should have gone through your list now three times. You have some things that are checked, some that are starred, and some that are arrowed. You might have one or two that have all three symbols. Those are great. We'll get back to those in just a minute. Um, and we're also going to have more tools to help you with those things in the coming weeks. Um, if you have any items with a check mark and a star, meaning that they're important and you have influence over them, but they don't have an arrow, which means you don't require imagination. I'm just gonna tell you, go do that thing. That's easy, go do it. It might not be the most pleasant task. Mine right now is empty the garbage, but it's a task that you can do and go get done. It does not require imagination. It doesn't require a lot of problem solving. It's just something that's important that you have influence over and you can go do. Um, if you have some with a check mark and a, an arrow, meaning that they're important, and they require imagination, but you don't have any influence over them, and that might be a lot of things uh, right now, then the first thing you need to do is find a way to gain influence, either over that situation yourself or to contact people who do, because we can come up with all of the ideas and all the solutions all day long, but if we don't own the challenge, then that's time that could be used in a different way that might be more productive. Um, if there's something with a star and an arrow, meaning you have influence and it requires imagination, but there's no check mark, meaning it's less important, save that for after you get more urgent things done. All we're trying to do with this exercise is to help kind of throw some priorities on all of the things that have been circling right now. Um, and a quick aside, one of the reasons that we thought of doing this exercise today was that we had the experience, uh, Beth and I, on a call earlier this week where there's some stuff that we'd been talking about doing that was definitely important, definitely we have influence over, definitely required imagination, but it hadn't been as important as other things and therefore it hadn't been getting done. But when suddenly schedules and work styles changed dramatically, there was room to make those a little more important and now they're things that we're working on and getting happening. For example, webinars from Creative Education <laughs> Foundation. So now that you've that. now that you've identified some challenges that you want to work on, let's turn these into questions that you and those who are at home with you can start to answer. To do this, we use statement starters. These are phrases that you can tack on to the beginning of a sentence that changes a statement into a question. Today, we're gonna to use, how might I? So go through your list of things that you want to, to tackle on today and turn them into questions with the how might I? So one of the ones that I had was um, to deal with exercising hard enough now that my gym is closed. So I'm concerned about doing that, how might I exercise hard enough that I actually get a good workout? That turns it into a question that can that I can then answer. So uh, take those things which have a star and a check mark and an arrow and turn them into questions using how might I? And then once you have those questions, your brain will automatically try to start to answer them. It's just how brains work. And please don't stop at the first answer. Um, creativity is not done with a quick solution. It requires us to really push to innovative and new thoughts. Uh, try to come up with at least five or 10 ideas for each of those questions. Um, the more you push for ideas, the more likely you are to find something novel that you hadn't thought of before. And the whole purpose of today's webinar is really to help you uh, figure out how to harness those thoughts and turn them into productive actions. So you're more likely to get to action that you can take if you give it a little bit more time um, and plan out more, more answers to the how might I questions. Once you have those answers, then you can start taking action. Implement implement your solution ideas that you have. So 
before we leave today, we want to remind you, capture your thoughts to help control them. That gives you power over them. Prioritize your actions. Decide what you can do and what should be done and handle those first. And then plan for success. The more you work at it, the more elegant it can be. And it feels like you have that locus of control. And then finally, if you would like to show us the swirls that you've made, the, the things that you've had, post them on our Facebook page, hashtag creativity connections. We'd love to see them. If you need any help or any further insight, please share and we are more than willing to respond. Yep, you can reach us uh, but on Facebook. Um, probably most of you got this by seeing it on Facebook, on one of our personal feeds or on the Creativity Education uh, Foundation Facebook page. Um, you can leave us comments or questions here in this webinar while it's live. Um, and one of our questions for you is what topics would be helpful and useful to you in the coming weeks. Uh, we'd love to have your suggestions, particularly on our Facebook page. We're gonna share the link to this webinar as soon as it's ready on the Creative Education Foundation uh, Facebook page. Um, there is the link to it if you need it. Um, please reply to that post um, with your ideas for what else would be helpful and useful to you as we plan out more of these. Um, we are, we are thrilled to be doing some creativity connections, both connecting individuals to their own creativity, as well as connecting creative individuals to one another. We'd like to thank all of you for attending this. We would like to thank you for anybody who shared this with everybody, anybody else. And we'd like to thank the entire Creative Education Foundation community. We have a number of people here who are just amazing and we're so grateful to be able to work with them. And finally, keep, keep connecting, connecting creatively. creatively. Thanks everybody. We will have more content soon.